Welcome to Phase On Labs, powered by World One One Podcast and sponsored by absolutely nobody. But it could be sponsored by you. If this is your jam, you should have your pod people call our pod people, and we'll do pod people lunch. I am, as always, your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. Joining me this evening is my partner in crime, Isabel Bramman. Hello. And joining Phase On Labs for the first time, but definitely not the last, Michael Morphball Miss Hat Brown. <laughs> too fat to fit into a morph ball <laughs> you just kind of expand a little until you're perfectly spherical and roll around full size uh-huh. <laughs> i look like a gray version of the uh the blueberry thing from w- willy wonka <laughs> <laughs> we'll paint some orange and yellow on there for you <laughs> so so real quick michael you want to introduce yourself since you're new to this show but not us as a family? Not particularly. <laughs> I'm not important enough to remember. <laughs> so, uh, Michael is uh, part of the World 1 1 family and has been for close to a year and a half now, if I recall. Um, <laughs> but he's uh, he will be joining us going forward for Phase on Labs. He's one of my oldest uh, Metroid compod- uh, compatriots, actually. So, um, we, we kind of go way the hell back and, uh, we're hoping that we keep going way the hell forward. So, but this week let's, uh, let's dig in with, uh, our, our pitch of the week, which is one that Michael and I have in chat probably over the last 12 months kind of toyed with the idea and had some fun knocking around. So I would love to roll into a Metroid game where we're starting fully powered and the difficulty curve comes from the fact that the further we're playing and the deeper we get into whatever the setting is i'm not even feeling picky about the setting this whole idea for me is just kind of all about the baseline mechanic of decay is that the further we get in an agent samus with you know an old suit that's barely hanging in there starts malfunctioning more and more and you're losing your abilities from full power down to next to nothing the further and deeper you get into this Hmm. and so instead of powering up you have to now find new ways to work with less and less in order to progress and eventually make your way through Mm -hmm. and i'm I'm picturing you know going up against a, a phenomenal you know ending boss fight with not much more than a pea shooter, basically. Mm-hmm. So, but that's kind of my baseline thought. So I'm, I'm going to toss it out there for the group to play with and see if we've got any ideas we maybe want to wrap this concept in. Almost uh, like, well, what about the concept of, like, yeah, your stuff is malfunctioning, your power is starting... You end up eventually having to cobble together random stuff that you can find to... And I'm not talking like... I forget what that game... What was that game where you played in the mall against the zombies? Oh, Dead Rising! Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking like that. But I'm talking like she has to basically improvise with various things that she finds. Mm-hmm. Um, behind this. You know? Or like... It'd be interesting just the content to see her have to pick up other weaponry that's not able to be integrated into the suit. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I don't know. I just think something like that could be interesting. Yeah. Or her have to figure out a way to make it to where the suit can use it, mm-hmm. even though it's clunky and, you know, unwieldy. Yeah. I'm almost, like, picturing, you know, like, the idea of the arm cannon and malfunctions so she just rips off the arm cannon and she now has two arms so she can like you know use both her hands to use like the improvised weapons and stuff like that that would be an interesting take on that and then we get into more melee combat instead of the ranged shooter combat almost Uh, like the first thing that she finds would be like just a pipe or something, and that's her weapon for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I dig this. You know, it would definitely change a lot of the feel, too, in that 
you'd be a lot more close range hand to hand combat than ranged. Mm-hmm. Not that fucking melee counter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm still curious to see how the uh, if it's maybe been balanced out a little better with dread, but you know we'll we'll know in about a week. Or so yeah. Oh my god, it is really that soon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. we we wow. got less than two weeks, man. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I'm thinking like to go with like a gameplay style, like a like a first person kind of perspective. Um, and then as you like pick up various items, you would be able to you know kind of like experiment and that kind of thing uh like maybe like you combine two kind of items and then you'd be able to you know like the pipe and like maybe like a flamethrower or something like that and suddenly you have a flaming you know like club or whatever that'd be like an interesting concept uh i'm thinking so yeah. I could definitely see like some real primitive workbench sections to, you know, play with pulling stuff apart and putting it back together in new arrangements to try and get different functions mm-hmm. and attributes out of some of the stuff you picked up. You can almost yeah. filter weapons similar to how uh, Biomutant was. Hmm. Because Biomutant, pretty much anything you find, you could shove into a weapon somehow. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm almost thinking like the resident like the newer Resident Evil games like had more well not like the not like the creative weapons but like the idea that it's more like the kind of like tense cuz you don't have enough uh, ammo so you kind of have to be creative with like your melee weapons and like how you approach different obstacles and things like that as well so that might be Pardon. also Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it just popped in my head. Part of me is thinking, too, that I I don't know if I'd want to go first person because I'm kind of liking the idea of asymmetrical parts of her suit are just kind of coming apart and falling off. Like, maybe she's, you know, we we were rocking the various suit with the shoulder buffs, Mm -hmm. but, like, one of the shoulder buffs is basically falling off and crumbled. Part of the chest plate's falling off, and it's just exposed wiring underneath and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I want that good visual decay. Mm. I can almost see this playing similar to uh, the game Rad. Okay. It was kind of an overhead, almost isometric view. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The game was mostly melee-focused, but it had a very cobbled-together feel to it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And honestly, in something like this, I don't know how you would make it work, but because Rad is actually a a roguelike... um, Something like that would would work very well for this if you could figure out a way to make it make sense storyline wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm actually now that you mentioned the isometric, I'm almost thinking of the super giant games. Yeah, because yeah. those are isometric, and a lot of them have like the uh, more roguelike elements, um, and the one that the one that I've played. I played a little bit of Bastion, uh, and that one has a lot of like creative weapons and a really interesting story from what I've seen so far with that's kind of like destroyed world and stuff. So maybe that could be like an interesting idea that Samus kind of, you know, has to deal with not only her suit falling apart, but the world is kind of crumbling around her as well. So. You know what would have a good baseline aesthetic for that? Mm-hmm. And, Michael, I'm surprised you haven't popped in with this yet, too, because I, I played it on your recommendation. I'm thinking Hob. Yes. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because, I mean, God. you get so many of those sections that kind of, you know, come up and move and change and shift the with all the gear work and everything. Piece. Lots of stonework, like overgrown, you know, vine stonework and everything. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's there's a real potential, and it's it's layered too. So I mean, you have, you know, that idea of you've got the overhead, but you're working in layers where you can actually go deeper and deeper too. Hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I do like that. 
that um, they can go like kind of maybe like even like a like shift your view maybe uh, mm -hmm. to to be able to go around. Hmm. So uh, I'm thinking our, our crux here could very well be that. You know, Samus is, like, like I said, I, I kind of want to see an, an aged Samus that's that's kind of losing the the touch and the reaction time. Is You know, she's gotten older and just kind of worn down over decades of doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this kind of heads towards a, a final mission. Maybe it's a, a... She picks up a beacon for a... Uh, a Chozo resting ground somewhere, and she's basically looking for somewhere to, you know, lay down and pass off in the elephant graveyard, so to speak. Mm hmm. And as, you know, everything's kind of falling apart, and she's, you know, cobbling everything together just to try and get to that last place to, you mm -hmm. know, go back to the, the people that picked her up, saved her, and raised her, mm -hmm. I, I think would be a really kind of melancholy overhang for that type of story and that visual and she's really just kind of fighting off and fighting her way through all just the the natural uh aging process well not just that um the 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 native inhabitants of mm. said planet mm -hmm. you know the the joke you know that they had settled in found that place is you know essentially like i said their elephant graveyard but mm -hmm. none of them had, you know been there in so long that the everything had kind of overgrown and it's now an ordeal for her to try and get there and mm -hmm. you know 30 40 years ago this wouldn't have been an issue for her but you know we're, we're kind of way down the line and everything's falling apart and mm -hmm. she's uh she's not what we sh what she once was I think it'd put a neat spin on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about so. the concept of something like, you know, in, in what you're saying here, she realizes that she's approaching an end. Mm -hmm. So almost like she takes on an apprentice or something like that to pass off what she has. Mm -hmm. So that way, like, it's still useful to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it would almost be a way to make the game two-player. Ooh, I like that idea. Co-op. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Like, My, uh... and especially the concept that, like, Samus's powers are waning, where the apprentice is just young. So, both of them have roughly a similar power level, mm -hmm. but they both would use it almost entirely differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine, like, the apprentice would be, like, faster. Yeah. But, and, like, Samus would be more of, like, a tank. Uh... So she would be slower, but she could take more hits. So an interesting thought. Yeah. No, I do like and this. And then once, once you know, we we get to end game and we uh, we finally you know reach the final resting place, um, you know the the tech is there for said uh, apprentice or uh, attaché to put together the last pieces to essentially. You know, build their own suit and mm -hmm. get a get a last infusion of Chozo DNA like Samus had to give that performance boost and tech compatibility and lays Samus to rest there and then takes off uh, out of the place and we, we've got a whole new character to follow. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I like this Hell, idea Hell, there's a, lot. a dread theory. Mm -hmm. Samus doesn't make it out of dread, and instead, you know, there, there's one decent Chozo left on ZDR, and essentially, you know, picks up after Samus and takes off. And future games are following a, you know, the player playing as a, a Chozo, a new character for the series taking on the mantle. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, we'll know in a couple of weeks. It's probably yeah, not that, that's... but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wild speculation is what we're about. Yeah. But I do like this idea of having, like, co-op uh, and having, 
the idea of having like two different characters that you could you know like with two different uh kind of like styles of gameplay um but they're but they have roughly the same power level basically so yeah no i like this it almost makes me think there's like the there was a game called tale of two brothers i think it was called yeah where, brothers yeah no brothers tale of two sons that was that's the one. it yes where where it was like single player co-op where like each analog stick controlled a brother and yep, like I remember this yeah and like you could control them uh each one separately and it was kind of wonky but it worked uh and it went through a kind of a interesting story like that so i'm also thinking too there was uh just in terms of you know not looking at this as a side scroll but as a you know like a top-down isometric mm -hmm. there was a game on the game boy advance and original ds that was a top-down isometric metroidvania that was a lot of fun too it was called scourge hive mm, yeah you've mentioned that before had yeah. kind of had kind of metroid fusion feel a little bit to it mm -hmm. but that was that was a good one and a lot of fun i should go back mm -hmm. and replay that actually <laughs> so yeah yeah i yeah but like the idea of having having like the two characters i'm just trying to think of like how you would control the two characters if you're doing single player uh Part of me thinks one's just AI control to auto support. Mm, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's not that uncommon. I mean, we did, you know, we we've done it with all kinds of stuff like Army of Two and mm -hmm. everything else under the sun, really. So mm -hmm. it would just be easier if it was, you know, like if you had multiple people. Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't even say easier, but it'd probably solidly be more fun. Yeah, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Possibly a uh, possibly a toggle between the two, so that way. You know, you can have primary control over which one you might need more at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Given that abilities and uh, attributes are varying between the two. Mm-hmm. So, I Let's think that'd be a good way to go around puzzle solving some of it. Mm-hmm. Unless you did it story-based, similar to how they did the new God of War, mm -hmm. how your secondary character was almost more of a tool than an actual character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well... That's not a bad way to do it either. Mm -hmm. So, but, so, what what kind of music plays in your head for this? Ooh. I'm thinking very atmospheric choirs, uh, Chozo choirs for this game. Uh Going back to like the Super Giant games style, they they've always done very solid uh, music. At a lot of their stuff is like ballads and that kind of thing. I think that'd be really interesting if the at the very end they sing a ballad about Samus's accomplishments. I think that'd be cool. I don't know. I mean, I've got I got two of Super Giant's games playing in my head, and I don't remember ballads in them because I'm thinking like Bastion was more Western feel. Yeah. Um, with the music, and then Hades was kind of you know, ancient Greek metal. Mm -hmm. Have you started Hades yet? Oh, I started. I just never. I haven't gotten to do much with it. I just recently hundred percented it. <laughs> well, I, I know that Transistor and uh, Pyre both have ballads in them, if I remember correctly. I know the Pyre okay. definitely does. Transistor and those are two that of... I haven't done much with. Yeah. So. Uh, so I don't that's about well. touched fire at all yet. Yeah. That one I really yeah. want to play. It's not on the Switch though. It's the only Super Giant game that's not on the Switch, which I'm really surprised. Yeah, that's kind of weird. But But I'm I'm th I'm thinking I've got more kind of uh nature organic heavy music playing in my head. Mhm. Mm maybe maybe a little more uh, synth sci-fi heavy to start mm -hmm. and uh, the the further we go it gives way to that more kind of uh, natural organic feel mm -hmm. and 
you know, as as she's kind of falling apart at her worst, you know, it, it starts to get a little more disconcordant mm-hmm. to to fit with it. What if the the music is directly tied to with how her suit is falling apart? Like yeah. it starts out, you know, there's more of the music, and as it progresses, it gets less and quieter, more more mm. stark, un- until like, and I almost think like. At the end, you really actually do get this ballad of them, of the Chozo people, praising her accomplishments and things as she's going into this, the, the, the Chozo graveyard we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, like, there's been a, a consistent drop-off throughout the entirety of the game of it very obviously just getting more and more minimalistic. Mm. Yeah, kind of layers peeling away real yeah. subtly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get behind that. Or ex- yeah. except, except in situations maybe where it does focus on the apprentice style character, where the mil- the the music kind of crescendos a little bit more and more with that character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, almost like maybe I... like two different music mm-hmm. styles. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Like or that. or like two different music instruments maybe to uh to like differentiate between them like i'm almost thinking like more like synths for samus and more like you know like regular kind of like like maybe like a guitar or something Mm -hmm. for the apprentice or something like that theoretically you could also do something like during each different piece of phase of the game as as her suit is falling apart you're hearing like broken renditions of music from past games. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like the th- the the theme that plays when uh when you're fighting like Mother Brain of Super Metroid. Just imagine a kind of damaged version of that mm-hmm. playing while just various things are going on. Hmm. Or maybe just like a much quieter Yeah. More subdued. Yeah. yeah. I do like that. Yeah. So, yeah. as we've been playing with this, I think, you know, the this has to have something of a, uh, a conclusive ending and a crux for, you know, what set it off all in the first place. And my brain goes to the idea that something found their resting grounds and was, you know, has been essentially desecrating their, their graveyard. And it tripped this beacon that Sam mm-hmm. has picked up and, you know, went to to head there and the the final bout with whatever this awful thing is not Ridley. um yeah definitely no not Rid- Ridley. ridley's got to be done damn it crocomire so, yeah <laughs> i just want crocomire to show back up i don't even care where i really do too i mean who knows maybe in a couple weeks we'll see him because obviously uh you know somebody else is making a return appearance for the first time in forever so but, um, but no, you know, the, uh, well, we'll have maybe our apprentice, uh, basically in the line of fire and Samus steps in the way, takes the hit and that's what puts her down and mm. she gets off the last shot and takes out the creature and that's, that's how we close this out essentially, or at least bring the, the gameplay portion to an end. Mm-hmm. And wrap the story at the end of you know the the like protege. I almost like the idea of Samus walking into this, knowing full well what all this means. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. she knows she's not walking out of this situation. Mm-hmm. At least like, a gut feeling, perhaps. Yeah, mm-hmm. like almost like she's been avoiding this place because she knows what it really means in the end. Mm-hmm. Get like Matt Smith Trenzalore vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, no, I'm 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 in full support of all of this, and uh, so I, I think that brings us to the point where we, we put a bow on it and we figure out what the fuck it's called. Mm-hmm. So I've got an idea, but I, I want to hear from the group what 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 title would you put to this? Hmm, I'm almost thinking. Metroid. Uh, so this is really silly, but I'm almost thinking Metroid Spirits Within, 
but I know that's a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> so Movie, actually. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's a movie. Yeah. So I feel like that would not work. Uh, God, I remember seeing that in the theaters. Yeah. Um, I had a, I had another thought. I'm not sure, Michael. What about you? I don't really have anything specific, but something akin, something about passing the torch on. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I've, I've got nothing specific, like no specific phrase or anything, but something that relays that that this is the story continuing in a new version. Uh huh. Hmm. See, my gut, my my brain goes to uh, Metroid Decay. Yeah, Entropy. I do like that. There you go. Uh huh. <sighs> so. I I almost feel like as though like like Metroid the final chapter <laughs> and. And then at the very end, there's like, as we see the apprentice flying away, there's the title screen, and then you put a question mark at the very end. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I feel like that would be silly, too. So, but. Metroid Passage. Ooh, I like that one. I like that one a lot. That one I think is a good one. That, that has a right feel to it. Mm hmm. So. Well, the last passage. There you go. Mm hmm So yeah. well, we have a name for this uh this some bitch. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's where we close this up for this week. Um we'll we'll make the, the quick rounds here and say thank you to everybody that tuned in this week. Uh thank you to both Isabel and uh Michael for joining me this week, and we'll catch y'all next time. See you next mission. Peace! Bye.